cannot believe it's Sunday already, you guys. I hope you've had a good week, and I want you to think about what we talked about last week, and did you have a chance this week to pray about helping someone, and what, what came out of that? Were you able to see God answering prayer? We're really glad to have you today, and we hope that this will be a blessing to you again today. Let's go ahead and pray, and we're going to get started, okay? Lord, we want to thank you so much for allowing us the privilege of meeting together even though it is virtually right now. I pray, Father, that you would help each one of us to today to listen well and to get out of today's lesson exactly what you want us to learn. I thank you for giving us opportunity to um, sing songs and to just rejoice in what you're doing, and I pray for your blessing upon each one watching today. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, everybody. Stand up and join me. Come on, people, now don't be late. It is time now to celebrate. Nothing in the world is better. Nothing in the world compares. Come on, people, now jump on in. We are giving the praise to you. Nothing in the world is greater than God's love for you, and you, and you. Jesus is the good, good news. He's the way to life and truth. He gave his life a sacrifice. He paid the price. Jesus is the good, good news. He's the way to life and truth. He forgives all our sins. He's a Lord. He's a friend. Jesus is the great good news. Good job. Let's do it again. Come on, people, now don't be late. It is time now to celebrate. Nothing in the world is better. Nothing in the world compares. Come on, people, now jump on. Mahalo, arigato. Do any of you know how to say thank you in a different language? Okay, easy one. Gracias. But you know what? There are thousands of languages around the world and people use them every day to say thank you to God for saving them from their sin. We all need to say thank you to God. If you've accepted Jesus as your savior from your sin, Thank him today and be sure to thank the Heavenly Father that loves you so very much. We can be thankful for a lot of things, but most of all, we need to thank him for saving us from our sin. What are some other things that we can thank him for? Well, maybe you can guess if I draw something. Does that look like a house? Yes, we can thank him for where we live and that we have a home to live in. Hmm, here's something else. Um, we can thank him for... an apple, which can stand for food. We all need food. And we have so much to be thankful for in this world. Um, let's see, another thing. I hope you can see what I'm drawing. Clothes, we all need clothes. Yes, and there's so much to be thankful for that we don't even see. Like, let me change my color so you'll get the idea. 
We can be thankful for love. We can be thankful for other things we can't see, like hope and joy and peace. And we want to thank him today. But you know what? Our word up for the day is, Gee, thank God Jesus gives hope. Hope. What we need the most of right now is hope. And Jesus will give it to us if we ask him. Word up for today, kids, is thank God Jesus gives hope. Say it with me. Word up. Thank God Jesus, Jesus gives hope. hope. Yes, thank you. talk about our scripture verse for this Sunday morning. But before I do that, Miss Terry, um, can I borrow a dollar so I can buy a soda so when I'm done with this I can drink it? Sure, no problem. Thanks. All right, the minute Miss Terry gives me that dollar, um, I've created a debt. I've created, I owe her something. And that's what we're going to be talking about, debt. And our Bible verse for this morning talks about debt. And usually when we talk about debt, it's money that we owe. I know I owe money here and I owe money there. Our parents probably owe money too. But you know what? In the Bible, debt is considered something else. In the Bible, the debt is punishment that you owe for sin. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit more later on in a couple of seconds, but first, Let's read from God's true word. If you have your Bible, and I hope you do, because it's Sunday morning and we take our Bibles to church, we're going to open our Bibles to Matthew. Remember, Matthew is the first book in the New Testament, and we're going to look to uh, chapter 6, and this morning's verse is going to be in verse 12. So if you have your Bible, you can follow along. But first, just listen as I read God's true word. And it goes like this. And forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. Matthew 6, 12. Did you hear the word debt? Let me say that one more time. And forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. Matthew 6, 12. All right. These last few weeks, we have been studying a prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. And it's a prayer that is a, a sample for us to follow how he wants us to learn how to pray. Well, we've been studying some of the verses up to today. And so I want us to review them. If you have your Bible, go ahead and follow along. We're gonna, I'm gonna start in verse 12, nine, I'm sorry. So let's look here and let's start with the red first. And it goes like this, everyone together. Pray then like this, our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven.
forgiven our debtors. Very good. Now, now we're going to take it apart and study it closer. The first part goes like this. And forgive us our debts. Debts are things, like I said, we owe. But in the Bible, it's punishment that we owe for sin. Boys and girls, when we sin, we, are, we, have, we have a debt to pay to God. We have, and you know what that is? You know what we owe God? What the punishment is for that sin? Separation from God. Because remember, God is holy and he has nothing to do with sin. So when we sin, we are separated from God. And without God, sin leaves us hopeless. But you know what? Just like our word up says, there is hope. God did something wonderful for you and for me. He sent his son Jesus to die on the cross. And because Jesus died on the cross, he had all our sin with him. He paid the punishment. He paid our debt, what we owe. And all was forgiven when he died on that cross and he suffered. And how do we know that we are forgiven? Because on the third day, he rose. And when he arose, we know for sure that all our sins were forgiven because God accepted that, that, that sacrifice that Jesus did. So God forgives us our sin because there is hope in Jesus. And the second part, as we also have forgiven our debtors. When we sin, we have debt. But who are the debtors? Those are the ones that do bad against us. Did your brother hit you this week? Did your friends treat you badly in school? What are we supposed to do? We think that we're supposed to be mean back to them, but that's not what Jesus says. Jesus says that we need to forgive. Just like he for God forgave us, we need to learn to forgive. Sometimes it's hard, boys and girls, to forgive when people do us wrong. But you know what? It was hard for Jesus to be on that cross. But he did it out of love. So we need to forgive. And if you can't forgive, what do we do? Pray. We ask God, help me, Lord. Help me to forgive. And he will help us. So let's say the whole thing for today from the beginning. And forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Matthew 6, 12. Think about these things as the week goes by and read the Lord's Prayer. So until next week, God bless. Sing our prayer with us, everybody. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. One more time, here we go. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So have forgiven our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Yeah.
Give this day your daily bread and forgive those who trespass against us. But lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Well, hello, boys and girls. We really miss you. Today we're going to be reading from God's Word because that's the place where it all began and where it's all going to end. Now, endings sound like it's something that are not so happy, but you know what? Endings can be pretty nice too. I know some people like to go to the very last of the book and read it first before they decide they want to keep on reading. Well, the beginning of the story is starts out in paradise, a place called the Garden of Eden. And there were two people there, Adam and Eve. But something happened that caused everything to make paradise not paradise anymore. And that's when Satan deceived Eve, and then Eve gave of the fruit of the tree to Adam, and he ate. So what happened to them? They got kicked out. That was the beginning of sin. Now what is sin? Sin is anything that we do that is against God's perfect plan. God's perfect plan was to be with him, to have a hope in the future, but somebody decided they'd go their own plan. And ever since then, we've been working out God's plan. And we're going to decide whether we want to follow it or not. And our lesson today is about a man who wanted to discover God's plan. But he had a lot of obstacles in his way. For one thing, he was a Samaritan. And the Samaritans were considered outsiders, like they didn't fit in. But he had another problem. He also had leprosy. See those spots on his face and hands? That's not because he didn't clean, That's, those are scabs. And there was a nasty disease, leprosy. It was an awful thing that caused a lot of people to suffer. And you know, sin makes us suffer too. So he had three problems. He had, he was a Samaritan, he had leprosy, and he had the penalty of sin over him. And on top of everything else, whenever he went out, he would have to yell at everybody, unclean wow so he's got even worse situation he couldn't have anybody to be near him i bet you that made him real sad well not so completely sad at least he could share his suffering with other people because he was hanging around 10 other lepers and those lepers had the same problem that he did it's interesting how sometimes we focus on our problems and think that that's all there is. But you know what? Jesus came to solve our problems, to give us a hope and a future. And when Jesus came, he came to do more than just uh, you know, show off how great he was. He came, he said the reason he came, uh, that I, he came to seek and to save those who are lost. Well, these guys heard about Jesus and the wonderful things he was doing. So they cried out to him, Son of David, have mercy on us. And so what do you think Jesus did? That's right, he had mercy on them. He reached out and he said to them, go to the priest to give the offering for the forgiveness for your sins. And that's what they did. They went to the priest and as they were going, they looked at themselves and realized, hey, the leprosy's gone. And one of them started shouting and praising God. He was that Samaritan. You know what he said? He said, thank God, Jesus gives hope. And that's our word up. Can you say that? 
Thank God Jesus gives hope. And that hope is a hope that's more than just healing. It also forgives us for the most awfulest thing of all, even worse than leprosy. And that's the penalty for sin, which is death. But Jesus didn't come to bring death. He came to give us the hope in the future and life by the forgiveness of sins. And we see that this one guy who came back, he fell on his face and started thanking Jesus. Well, I guess you would think, thank him too because of the wonderful thing he'd done for you if you lived for I don't know how long with an awful disease and now it was gone. But how many were there? Can you remember? There were 10, but only one came back. I like to put it this way. None of them didn't get it. Only one got it. He saw that Jesus was more than just a healer. He was the Messiah, the one chosen by God to save us from our sins. And he recognized that and had faith in that and believed in him. And that's what our lesson's about, is that we can have hope of eternal life because of Jesus. Because that's why he came, to save us from our sins. And that's something to be thankful for. Let's say it together. Thank, Thank God, God Jesus, Jesus gives, gives hope. hope. So if you're out there and you think, well, there's no hope. Well, guess what? There is hope, but his name is J-E-S-U-S. Uh-oh. That sounds like a song. Here we go. J-E-S-U-S. He's my Lord and King. J-E-S-U-S. Jesus. He's our hope. And he wants to give us a hope. And how do we get that? It says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And that's a hope and a promise from God that we can all count on. Because he wants to give us his peace and his hope. Just like he came for that man right there. Jesus had lots of examples where he came to people and gave them the hope that they needed of salvation. And this one man who called out to God and believed in him, believed in Jesus and what he did for him on the cross, now has eternal hope, a hope that will never end, a life that will never end. And that's something we can all put our trust in, the promises of God, which will never fail. Now, I also thought about something real interesting about this story, is that everybody was scared of lepers. They didn't want to be around them. But there's a verse in 1 John 4.18 that says, Perfect love cast out fear. Jesus didn't have any fear of this man. How come? Because he had perfect love. And that's the kind of love he wants to give us too. He wants us to experience his love. And when he comes into our life by his salvation and by his gift of his spirit, he gives us the ability to love other people, even the untouchables, the people we don't even want to recognize. Jesus came to give us hope and a future if we just trust in him. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the hope we have in Jesus and that he gave his life so that we might have real life, eternal life, a life that begins at the moment of our calling on his name and he adopts us into his family. We thank you for Jesus and all he's done for us. We pray this in the name of our King, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. See you guys real soon. Well, we can pray to God. So let's talk to him right now in this song. Stand up.
Long ago, when someone did something very bad, a king might punish that person by putting him in a dungeon. A dungeon was a horrible prison where the king punished his enemies. Just like the man who got thrown in the dungeon, did you know that we also deserve something even worse than a, being thrown in a dungeon for the things that we have done? By raise of hand, I want you to tell me, have you ever done anything wrong? Like, let's say maybe you stomped your foot and said no to your mom, or maybe you took your brother's toy, or there's lots of other things, right? I think all of us, if we think hard enough, can admit that we've done something wrong. And do you know that God's word tells us that that is a sin and it separates us from God? Just like the dungeon is a place of separation from the kingdom, so it is if we continue to live in sin and don't confess those sins to God, we will also someday be separated from God. And those of us who have already given our lives to Jesus, we know that one day we will live with him for eternity. And what a blessing that is and how we can be super thankful for him giving us that eternal life and him allowing us to live with him and to be drawn close to him. And so today I want us to remember that we need to be thankful for that. Just like the man in our story today, there were 10 lepers and only one returned thankful to God. And we need to return thankful to God for what he's done for us. Just like our Bible verse today too spoke to us being forgiven as we forgive those who sin against us. And so let's remember to forgive those who sin against us and then to also look to God for our um, forgiveness. We're gonna take just a minute now to pray and thank God. And there at home, maybe after we finish today, you as a family can take time together to pray and thank God for what he's done. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, I thank you so much for the forgiveness that you have given to us. We don't deserve it, and yet, Father, you reach out to us in grace and love, and you extend to us your salvation. I thank you that anyone listening today who comes to you confessing that they are a sinner and putting their trust in you, they too can have eternal life with you one day. We thank you for that. We thank you that right now we are able to have our church at home, that we can spend extra time with family, that, Lord, we can worship you wherever we are, and I thank you that today we were able to do that together. In Jesus' name, amen. Kids, you know, we can thank God wherever we are, and we need to tell others about his love for us. But we can't really go outside and do that. But how could you do that? Write a letter, make a phone call. Just think of creative ways that you can share the love of Jesus. And sing this song with me at the same time. Stop and let me tell you what the Lord has done for me. tell you what the Lord has done for me. He forgave my sin and he saved my soul. He cleansed my heart and he made me whole. Stop and let me tell you what the Lord has done for me. Go and tell the story of the Christ of Just praise the Lord all week until we see you again. Bye.